In this series of videos, we're going to cover the entire process for creating and importing custom scenery into X-Plane. In this video, we'll identify and install all the necessary programs. Before we begin, there is one thing we need to be absolutely clear about, and that is what file format X-Plane accepts. It's called the OBJ or OBJ8 object file. The file extension is .obj, however there's a catch. In the 3D industry, there is an OBJ file format also referred to as the Wavefront object file format that is used all over the place. These file formats are not the same, and if you see an OBJ file on a modeling website, it is most certainly the Wavefront format, unless the site is specifically about X-Plane. But do not worry, it is very easy to discern between these two file types when you open them up in a text editor. Before you, I have two OBJ files. However, they're in completely different formats. Here, we have the Wavefront object file. Let's go ahead, right click it. I'm going to open it with Notepad++, but you can use any text editor that works for you. This file includes a series of commands, such as the V command for vertex, which has three decimal numbers after it, describing the X, Y, and Z locations of that point. If we scroll down further, F is for face, which is how you combine the points to make the individual polygons of the surface. There is a bit more to it than that, but that's the minimum you need to identify a wavefront type OBJ file. Now if we right click and go ahead and open up the X-Plane version, what we'll see here are a series of commands starting with VT for vertex table. This is a table of all the points of the object, with each line listing the position in X, Y, and Z coordinates, followed by the normal of the surface, and then the UV coordinates. The normals are used to describe the orientation of the surface and are used in lighting calculations. The UV coordinates are the texture coordinates used to map a 2D image to a polygon's 3D surface. You may also see a pound or a hashtag here. Those are for comments. If you scroll further down in the file, you'll eventually get to the index table, identified by the IDX10 or just the IDX command. These list what vertices to use from the vertex table to define the polygons of your object. IDX10 allows 10 vertices to be specified per line, while the simple IDX command does one vertex at a time. There's a lot more to this file format than just this, but that's what you need to identify between a wavefront and an X-Plane OBJ file. Now let's move on to the necessary software. Obviously, we're going to need X-Plane. You can get it from either the official website or purchase a copy through Steam. Either one is going to work fine for creating custom scenery. In my case, I'm going to use the Steam version because I happen to get it on sale. Steam installs programs to a different Steam-specific directory, so as you watch these tutorials, do note that you'll need to track down your own X-Plane directory based upon where you happen to install it. Now to place the 3D model at a location in the X-Plane world, which is the entire Earth using Latin longitude, we need a second program called World Editor. Choose a browser and go to your favorite search engine. Go ahead and do a search for X-Plane World Editor. Near the top of the page should be a link to the World Editor website. Click on that, and inside of here, you'll see stable releases of the latest version of World Editor, which is 2.1 for this video. Go ahead and download the version that makes sense for your operating system. I'm using Windows. Once that downloads, you'll have this zip file. Go ahead and extract the zip file to a new folder. In order to keep things organized, I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder and call this X-Plane. I'm going to drag my World Editor folder into it, open that up, and then look inside. You'll notice two files. The first is, of course, the README, which you should always take a look at. The second is what we're interested in, and that's the worldeditor.executable. If you go ahead and double click on World Editor, it will launch this window. Now, I've already associated this program with X-Plane, so I get it to look like this. However, for you, it will be blank, and you'll have three options down here. New, Open, and Choose X-Plane Folder. You're going to want to go to Choose X-Plane Folder. You're then going to navigate to the directory of X-Plane. For myself, I've put that under a different hard drive, specifically for games. So I'm going to go to my hard drive called Speed, and Steam Library, Steam Apps, Common, scroll along there, 
and get to X-Plane 11. Once inside of there, I will hit OK. If you did that correctly, you should now see something similar to what I have here in your world editor. Now, if you have other scenery packages that you installed yourself, you'll have additional entries inside of this window. For now, that is all you have to do. We won't come back to the world editor until after we've exported out our asset as a X-Plane OBJ file. To create your custom scenery, you're going to need a 3D modeling program. Examples include Blender, SketchUp, Maya, 3D Studio Max, Houdini, and many more. It doesn't matter what you use to create your model. What does matter is exporting your model in a format that is compatible with Blender, which is the program we'll be using to convert our 3D models into an X-Plane OBJ8 format. As of Blender 2.8, without any non-standard plugins, the popular formats Blender can import are the Collada file format, which is popular with mechanical and CAD drawings, the FBX format, which is popular between Autodesk applications and game engines, the Wavefront object file, which is pretty much popular with anything that does 3D, and finally the STL format, or stereolithography format, popular with 3D printers, and I've also seen it used with X-ray tomography. Do understand that each of these file formats supports different features. STL, for instance, simply describes each and every triangle in the structure, and you might need to fix your model when imported into Blender if you use this file format. OBJ, on the other hand, describes polygons and even materials with an MTL file, but doesn't describe complicated things like rigs or bone systems. FBX, on the other hand, supports a huge range of features popular in programs such as Maya and Max. However, the FBX file format is being updated almost yearly, so you want to make sure you export with the correct version for whatever system you're working on. If you're bringing over objects from CAD programs, though, you might also have excessive amounts of detail, with hundreds if not thousands of extraneous polygons describing intricate features such as individual bolts and nuts, which you're going to want to remove before bringing them into X-Plane. Now go ahead and open up your browser again. To export our 3D geometry, we're going to need Blender versions either 2.78, 2.79, or version 2.8. It really depends on which of the plugins we're going to be using that you decide to work with. Blender went through significant changes between moving from 2.7 to 2.8. So if you do try moving between these, do note that all of the button combinations and the user interface have vastly changed. I personally highly recommend using 2.8. It has a lot of interesting and great new features. However, the plugin is still experimental. So not all the features might be present but that's what we'll be using in this tutorial series. Let's head over to the Blender website at blender.org. Go ahead to the download section on the website. Now scroll to the bottom and look for previous versions and select the link for previous releases. As we can see, it is currently located here. If you look a little bit further down, it'll say, take a walk down memory lane, and it will show you available Blender releases. Now we get this interesting website, which is just a list of all the different versions of Blender. If we scroll on down, there are three in particular that you might want to consider. 2.78, 2.79, and 2.8. In this video series, I'll be using 2.8. However, I will tell you that I have successfully used Blender 2.78 to also export out assets. And if you're trying to do something complicated that's not yet supported in the latest version of the plugin, you might also want to go back to version 2.78. So let's go ahead and click on Blender 2.8. Inside of here, you'll see a list of all the different versions of Blender you can download. The most important thing for you to understand here is that if you've already installed a version of Blender, like you see I have here, if you try to install another version, especially an older version, it will not let you. You're going to need to use the zip file version of it instead of the executable version of the file. This will allow you to run Blender from its own folder and not install it to your system. So I'm going to scroll on down here and I'm going to see Blender 2.80 Release Candidate 3 64bit.zip. I'll go ahead and click on that and allow it to download. Once the file's downloaded, go ahead and bring it into your X-Plane folder, right click and paste it. Go ahead and unzip this to the folder as well. Go ahead and open the folder up and inside, if you scroll down, you'll notice the blender.exe file. This will allow you to run Blender from within this folder. Now, if you went ahead and installed Blender to your system, you can also usually find it under your start menu. As you can see here, I have Blender. Either way will work. Now we need a plugin specifically designed for Blender called X-Plane to Blender. Even though it's called X-Plane to Blender, 
It's really all about taking objects from Blender and getting them into X-Plane. Once again, head to your favorite search engine and type in X-Plane to Blender. X-Plane to Blender. And down here, you're going to find a link to a GitHub code repository. Click on it. If you're not familiar with GitHub, it's a place where people can share code and as a community, make incremental updates over time to enhance programs. You can download code from GitHub through either a command line interface, a GUI, or directly through the website, which is how we're going to be doing it. Now versions change over time, so the part of the video that's going to be subject to the most change is this one right here. The version of Blender you chose is going to determine what version of the plugin you want to download. If you scroll down slightly, you'll see it mentioned that this add-on is for Blender 2.78 and up. Now I have successfully gotten it to work with 2.78 and 2.79. However, there is a latest release version that works with 2.8. However, it's experimental, and as of this time, when I made this video, it's not found directly on the main page. Instead, what we're going to do to find this other experimental version, we're going to go and click on the button called Branch, which you see right here. We're going to go and search by tags instead of branch. Under tags, you'll see it list the different versions. The latest version is version 4, alpha.5, and this specifically targets the latest version of Blender, which is 2.8. Go ahead, click on that, and it will bring you to this page here. Now we can go over to this green button called Clone or Download. Press it, and then download the zip file. Once that completes, copy and paste it once again into our X-Plane folder. Go ahead and extract this folder once again. Now once it's been extracted, you can go ahead and open it up. Inside, the most important part is this IO underscore X-Plane 2 Blender folder. Inside of that is all of the Python scripts necessary to make this work inside of Blender. Go ahead and copy or cut this document. Now go to your Blender folder, whether that's the install version or the folder that we extracted. Inside of here is a folder called 2.8. Open that up, go ahead down to Scripts, and then Add-ons. Inside of here, you're going to right-click and paste that IO X-Plane folder. You'll also notice that there are other IO underscore add-ons. That should give you an indication that you're in the right place. Now, if you went ahead and did an install of Blender instead, go ahead to your directory where you think it is, Program Files, Blender Foundation, Blender 2.8, Scripts, Add-ons, and then go ahead and paste it inside of this directory as well, as you can see right here, IO underscore X-Plane 2 Blender. Now go ahead and open your version of Blender. So let's go under Blender folder, scroll down, double click on the executable. You'll get this splash screen at first, go ahead and click it to make it go away. Now we need to make sure the plugin's functioning. So let's go to Edit, Preferences. Under Preferences, go to the Add-ons tab, go to the search bar, click on it, and type in X-Plane. You'll get one entry to pop up. Go ahead and make sure it's checked. If it's not, click on it, and it should come to life. You know that it's working properly if you come over here to the right-hand side of your screen towards the bottom, and you click on this button over here called Scene, which looks like a series of different shapes. You know the plugin's functioning if you have a section called X-Plane with a bunch of different options you can see here. We'll be going into what all these different options mean further on in the video series. Now, if you happen to use an older version of Blender, it's a little bit different to get to the user preferences section. You're going to want to click on this icon you see here on one of the windows, which shows you all the different kinds of windows you can have accessible in Blender. Specifically, you're going to click on user preferences, and then you'll be given this window here, where in the center is the add-ons tab. If you click on add-ons, click on the search bar, type in X-Plane, and make sure you once again click and activate that checkbox everything should work again in an other version of Blender. Congratulations! You're almost ready to begin creating scenery for X-Plane. However, there is one additional optional step you can do, and that is to install the X-Plane export configuration file for an application called Substance Painter if you happen to use it. Substance Painter is a powerful tool for texturing and includes hundreds of custom materials for making surfaces look incredibly realistic. And it can even export directly in the texture format that X-Plane is expecting. If you'd like to do this, you'll first need to download Substance Painter and have it installed. Last I checked, they still have a trial version. And if you happen to be a student, I believe there's an educational version you can also download. Go ahead and install it if you'd like to follow along with this. 
go ahead and open up another browser and type in X-Plane Substance Painter. One of the top links will be to this video called Substance Painter Tutorial in X-Plane. If you look here, what you'll notice is a download called Substance Painter Export Setup File. Go ahead, click on that and allow it to download. Once again, copy and paste that into our X-Plane directory and extract it when you're finished. Once pasted, go ahead and extract it. Once extracted, you'll have a new folder and specifically the file xplane.spexp is what you want to be working with. Go ahead and open up Substance Painter if you're using it. Go to File, Import Resources. Click Add Resources. Go to the place you extracted that folder, in my case xplane.spexp underscore, and double click on this file. It will then show you this file as one that you have imported in. Before you can accept this, you need to choose where you're importing these resources into. I'm going to go ahead and choose Shelf. Hit Import. Now to show you the next part, I have to have a model loaded, but I'm going to go to File, New, and find a model that I've created, and hit OK. Now under File, Export Textures, if we click on Config and scroll down, what you'll notice is a X-Plane config file. If I click on that, what you'll see is that I have for each material, once again, things that we'll explain later on, I have three different textures that are going to be exported to X-Plane. X-Plane is capable of working with an albedo channel and alpha channel, which includes the default color of that object and any transparency. It also exports a normal texture, which provides more detailed lighting information for the surface, as well as the specular information for the surface in the alpha channel. And finally, the last optional one is the lit texture, which allows you to bring life to your objects at nighttime. Now you are completely set up to begin creating custom scenery files for X-Plane. In the next video, we'll create a basic model and discuss some limitations of scenery objects inside of X-Plane. See you next time, so long and goodbye.